so from here, I feel like Ragnarok will play kind of standard. This is my guess. What about Maru? Bio or Mech? Call what? it now. Call it now. Call it now. Uh, Bio. Okay. Wait, wait, Mech. No, no, I, I think Bio. Okay. I think he'll Mech. <laughs> it's like that thing in Monty Python. That, that's still one of the funniest things we've yeah. ever seen. It's like, what's your favorite color? And he's like, red. No, blue. <laughs> he, gets, he gets his opinion wrong. <laughs> It's so funny. Oh, that, that movie that's, was so ahead that of That scene time. is so funny. I gotta rewatch some of their the stuff. The idea that you got your own opinion wrong. Like, you yeah. messed up that. It's not even a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like Ragnarok is gonna be easily be able to claim uh, the 6 o'clock spot here. Look at Maru sitting here on 71 workers. Who is this guy? He's a Zerg Terran. Best race, yeah. Whew. Well, Protoss still better, but like, yeah, yeah. Protoss still good. OP though, right? <laughs> yeah. See, memers, we get you. Um, <laughs> we're there for you. We're one of you guys too. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> I fellow <fit> kids. <laughs> I'm part of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fellow kids. Fellow kids. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where's he going with that? Oh, I'm sorry. I actually never. Mind. He's going right up to his base. Dur. Uh, he's gonna drop <laughs> these banes up here. No, I seriously, for just a split second, like decided that the, actually Zerg was at like the top left. I don't know how that happened in my brain, but he I has actually, to get these banelings back yes, home. Yes, yeah, he's sending the banelings home to defend. Um, I don't think Maro is watching his screen oh. for his mini map. Look at that. It was a nice drop. That Overlord could have done a figure eight and then dropped that. Yeah. Thirteen kills. Yeah, very nice. Of course, he's still got sixty miners, so it's not the end of the world for him. Almost full saturation still. So Maro's just now getting his fourth up here. Now the fact that we have the Zerg going for a Massling Hydra Bane, he wants to try to have a really explosive fight where mm -hmm. the trade is so effective that it's hard for the Terran to ever come back from. And that'll probably be happening around this fourth base here. And you know, his second factory, I think it was just slightly late. So he doesn't have as many Seed Shanks as I was expecting, but he needs to hit his attack now. He's got his 2-2. Wow, this counter attack is actually doing a surprising amount. Uh, kills two siege tanks and gets some of these units as well. That's really worthwhile. But uh, anyways, we're up into the hive tech, right? And the greater spire has just started. So he only has a small window for, you know, some of these attacks before the broodlords join. All right, the first ghost academy just finished up. Just got to wait now for him to add six more and then spend all of his money on nukes. It's coming. Nuke time. Well. Um, Ooh, Zerg's 18 taking, drones with that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, he's going to pop out some more workers. Well, he has to match tomorrow here for worker counts. Uh, we're actually going to have a drop over here. It looks like Zerk's totally prepared, though. Maybe in the main? Mm. Well, he's got mines in here, I think. No, those are marauders. No, there's mines. Oh, okay. You were right, Artosi. Yeah. You've got to believe in yourself. Okay, actually, this would be pretty convenient to take out the Ultralisk Cavern here. Oh, All right. Cavern going to be started right there. Ooh! Oh, not pretty, bad. Yeah, pretty decent mine hits there. Oh, my God, the Greater Spire's here. Looks like he's... Is he going to... Okay. He's going to go for it. Yeah. He gets it. That's a oh, huge oh, kill. Yeah, it doesn't quite get it. That would have been a gigantic kill, though. All right, that drop was really effective. Yeah. Too bad he didn't get the uh, Greater Spire, but I mean... He's doing a surprising amount with these drops. So uh, we, we have Ragnarok actually expanding out. It's just above the 6 o'clock spot. 6 o'clock on a smaller clock, if you will. Um, <laughs> on a smaller clock? Yeah. Well, on a normal 6 o'clock, that's on a big clock, but if you got a little clock, like the one by your bed, maybe not the one on the wall. The, but you had the Infestors in, and there you go. That's the end game. Getting Neural right now as well. Lots of Liberators being made. I'm excited to see how he does this exactly, because the amount of Liberators he's making, it seems like everything we've seen Morrow trying for the last couple months has been heavily Liberator-focused in this matchup. Yes. But no, nothing's really stayed around. Maybe he just hasn't found exactly what he wants, but he likes the effect of the Liberators. Yes. Yep. A lot of Banes. Yep. And it looks like Terran's going to be pushing through the bottom. 
This is where the real sweet real estate for the Zerga is, too. There's three bases down there that are still very mineral rich. Yeah. And so uh, Zerga looks like, because they're expanding away from each other here, Zerga's going to actually counterattack. I don't know if we're going to get a shot of it. We'll see if Shine catches it, but there is an attack at 12. All right, the Shine. noobs have begun. Oh, oh nice, nice. Nice kill there. Doesn't look like you're getting too much damage on there, but we'll cancel this and a bunch of building spores, it looks like, or maybe they'll run away. Okay, he wins. He, he's defeated that first base. You can see Zerg flirting, I'm tearing flirting with the idea. I'm sorry, Zerg flirting with the idea of attacking a little bit further in there, but no dice, not going to work. I also wonder if Mara might expand a little bit towards the center left. Yeah, you know, he's, he's already pushing through here, so it's oh, kind of the like center a, left. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to see him land a command center there. Okay. Kill it at least. Oh my God, he's going to get these drones. He's Maybe. only seen one of the nukes coming here. He has no idea about this one. Ooh. Oh, finally. I a love nuke. that he scans to see it. Yeah. That is so funny. Because in, in a perfect game, you wouldn't scan, but you're like, could I actually get yeah, that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you would think you wouldn't, but everyone always does. Yeah. Actually, I guess knowing that you actually got the drones means that you can confirm that you have the advantage. So maybe it is. Shine. Taking mental notes here, where he has to get uh, the camera ready to try yeah. to catch the nuke, almost hitting the camera. Bungle starting to come out. Oh, nice oh, EMP there. Sick. But apparently, there's one still with a fungal ready. Ooh, we have a couple vipers in this cloud right now. You got to be careful about that. Ooh, the EMP coming out. I love it. I love it. Those parasitic bombs are oh, so oh, deadly. Oh, there's shots. He did it. He was ready. Oh my God. Are the bailings going to come down here and try to hit these ghosts? Well, that's one way to make your opponent use his banelings, but... Yeah, and then just bungle everything while you're there. Yeah. While you're at it, may as well kill his air army. Yeah, everything else. So Terran's actually expanding more towards the middle instead. Mm. Uh, taking that left spot, which I guess actually is a better spot now that I look at it. That is a lot of Broodlords. My god. More and more command centers on the way. Increasing that air army, getting those upgrades. Okay, so here we are. We're at that spot that Terran struggled with. Infestor Broodlord. The Infestor Broodlord is real. Now, remember that this army comp is not fast, and that's exactly why Myro's going to hit this place over here in the center right. Uh, a lot of times when you have a, an army that seems almost unstoppable, the best way to play is to play around it. Yeah. So this is where the guerrilla tactics are really going to kick in. And even though we have this very frightening unit composition that's being built from Ragnarok. Yes. A lot of times when we see Mara lose to this, it'll be this unit composition, but also like a 10k, 8k bank. We don't see that from Ragnarok. Mara's done a good job of denying a lot of these bases. So while it's still maybe doable here for Ragnarok, uh, I feel like there are some positive signs for Mara, who's starting to bank quite a bit as well. One thing I would love to see out of him, I want to say, is maybe a Raven or two. I feel like Interference Matrix... Uh, it, well, obviously the armor shredder is good too, but interference matrix I feel like can help you out of a bind sometimes. Like you see a viper there or something that's gonna yeah. just wreck your day with parasitic bomb. That was a close one. The sound effect was coming. Yeah. Probably hits just off the map at that moment for the nuke. All right, so another big push is coming in here, setting up the liberation zones with the nukes. He's trying to bait some of the army in here. The Broodlords are getting in position. He's got to back off though temporarily. And I love the fact that Morrow is nuking everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that sound effect can only come out so many times at, at, at once, right? So you don't always get a read, and you can easily miss one of those nukes. Like Ooh. we start, we're seeing there. Look at that. The preemptive scan to dodge those fungals. Fantastic moves once again yeah. from Morrow. He is absolutely everywhere. You can see how badly he wants it. Ghost. So sick of people talking like he's not a killer right now. Oh, he's going to take out the Banelings Nest. That's actually pretty important. When you have Terra in your base, you need to make those Banes pretty quickly. Look at this. He's just going to run into the main. Ooh, he actually separates a few units there to make sure the Infestors can't just fall him right up. Okay, now he's going to get the Ultras Cavern. He's going to get the sp uh, Spawning Pool. Oh, I love that he just gives up the army. Yeah, yeah, that was sick. Gets his Medivacs out of there. That's really the only thing that matters. Who cares about those Marines and Marauders? Dude, he's so good. He is playing a magnificent game. This is awesome. I just noticed that the nu uh, thing actually makes a nuclear, like, radioactive symbol. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never actually noticed that before, but I'm sure we're going to have another nuke moment. But watch what the symbol is in it. 
that we all can have this moment together. Yeah. We learned something today. Just like we learned that in StarCraft 1, there's a man inside the missile turret. There's a man in there. If you look at the picture of it really closely. Yeah, you think there is. See, see, see the radioactive symbol? Yeah, I do. Radioactive see. symbol here yeah. because nuclear bombs aren't radioactive. You'd think that they would uh, up the technology so that you actually don't see a red dot. I there. know. It would be a lot better. He nearly killed the hatch with that. Let's see if there at the end. Oh, the tank's in the top right. I couldn't figure out where that was coming from. I'm like, what is hitting those? Okay, so Maru now has the entire top of the map. Okay, Maru is at the point where he's out expanding the Zerg here. But at the same time, you know, he's he's nuking, he's pushing, he's expanding, he's True. doing all sorts of things, but we're not seeing actual valuable units being taken out for Ragnarok. So his bank is starting to grow. His army is still super fearsome. 14 Broods, 15 Corruptors, 14 Infestors, a couple Vipers. And that's scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, Maro has more territory on the map. He has more Dominion on the map, but the Zerg does have technically the scarier endgame army. And at some point in time, you're going to have to confront that. Okay, here we go. Now it's really, you can really see the nuclear symbol now. Yeah, it's not messing around. It's oh, another location at the same time. Nice attack Beautiful here, move. too. Takes the hatch out. I got to say, these little guerrilla tactics are starting to pay off big time here for Maro. You're seeing that Ragnarok had great endgame here, but as time passes, like, Maro's completely surrounded him with harass and nukes everywhere. Yeah, he's been on all sides. This is a game that I don't feel like many people in the world could pull off. He's well, looking so strong right now. StarCraft II, the fastest RTS game. It's hard to find anybody who's faster at playing it than Maro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's everywhere. His multitasking is insane here. The fact that he is hitting three positions, he's nuking, he's microing, he's dodging fungals. Maro has really hit his stride here. And the thing is, Ragnarok is playing so well. Oh my god, he's going to die. He high. looks like a round of four player right now. Oh, he's nice. getting garbage compacted, man. He is. This is like that scene in Star Wars where they're in the garbage compactor, except in that one, everybody just dies. The story ends there. One thing I do want to mention, though. Okay, you, you okay. said you went like this, or you went one thing I want to mention. Yeah, and then well, you I was, say, this, was, yeah. this was a stressful moment. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention is, even though he's doing all these great things, he's killing a bunch of stuff, let's not forget this army. And let's not forget that game where Solar was, like, not mining for near 10 minutes. That is true. You know, this... Well, with no mana on those, that's... Yeah, he EMP'd every he... single investor. And suddenly, the Vikings, they're getting their revenge that uh -oh. they waited so long for. Yeah, this is Viking justice. Fitting, because his opponent's name is Ragnarok. Um... <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm done, you win! GG. Oh my god! Whoa! I'm going home, Artosis. Whoa!